So this problem set is really nice because it goes over all the main types of problems that you might see. And I kind of ordered it from easiest to hardest. So right now the first one is off a cliff. And this is the classic one where something is either sh driven off a cliff with their car, you jump off, you roll a ball off a cliff, or you shoot like a projectile horizontally. So like a gun, um, an arrow, you throw something horizontally. So this is typical of that. And when you're doing these problems, you want to look for keywords. So right here it says um, horizontally. So you kind of go, okay, it's only moving in that direction. And you also see drop. So those are kind of key things because whenever something's off a cliff, there's two things that you know. VI is equal to zero. And you know velocity constant in this case is 10. So these are the two knowns that we get really quickly by just finding out it's off a cliff. So a seagull is flying horizontally constantly at 10 meters per second. It drops a white surprise and eventually hits the teacher two seconds later. So in a problem like this, we always want to set it up with its vertical. Nope, can't spell. With its vertical and its horizontal. So I like to do this even before I do a drawing, just to, it just helps me out. Um, and it's going to be the same every time anyway, so it doesn't hurt to do this. All right, so we have it set up. One thing even before I read the problem, I know this is negative 9.8 because we're doing projectiles on Earth. All right, um, let's do this. So it's we know what it is. Here's my bird. And it's going to drop a white surprise. And then eventually it's going to do a parabolic curve. And so it's going to go like this. And it's going to hit poor teacher. Okay. Now, what's going on? Remember, velocity here is 10 meters per second. Constant. Even though the bird is dropping this, and we know that VI is equal to zero, its VC is still 10 meters per second. So just imagine you're holding on something in your car and you let go of it. The object that you're letting go is moving at the same horizontal speed as you are. Um, and if you do it in a car, it's really obvious because it falls straight down. If it wasn't going the same horizontal speed as you, then it'll fly backwards. Now, it looks like that when you stick out your hand and drop something, but that's just because of air resistance. So let's fill in what we know. VI is zero. VC is 10 meters per second. And the last thing, we actually know the time. So the part that connects the two, we know. Okay. So it's just two separate equations that we need to solve. This one's fairly straightforward. Um, for vertical, you have one, two, three variables, you're looking for dy because it says how far horizontally and how high was the bird. So we're going to find out how high. The one without vf is d equals vit plus one half at squared. I personally don't like this equation, but in this case it's easy because vi is zero. So d equals one half at squared, um, one half negative 9.8 and we're looking for two seconds squared. So we're gonna be left with displacement because second squared will cancel out of this one. Um, two, two, so it'll be two times 9.8, so it'll be negative 19.6 meters. So that's my D and the Y, negative 19.6. So I got one done. The other one's fairly straightforward as well. DX equals VCT. Um, you're just looking for VC, which is 10. Oh, I wanna lose my screen so let me kind of redo it equals 10 meters per second times time which is 2.0 seconds just do it and then seconds cancel out again and you're left with 20 meters so from bird dropping to here is 20 meters from the height excuse me it is 19.6, but it drops 19. All right, so that's the first problem. Fairly straightforward. The main idea here is when you see horizontal, um, moving at horizontal speed, then we know that is this. 
Okay, so when we're talking about like bombers as well in the plane, it'll be the same exact setup as this one. Do a quick screenshot. Save, all right. Range equation is a nice way to shorten it, but we don't always have to do a range equation, um, but it is only possible if and only if dy equals zero. So I'm gonna solve it two ways. One, I'm gonna use the equ range equation and the other way I'm gonna do it the more traditional way. Either way, I wanna show you it's fairly straightforward as long as you get the setup correctly. So that's the main thing, making sure you get your setup correctly. So here's my soccer ball and it's gonna get kicked at an angle of 18 meters per second and 30 degrees. So I want to know how far it's going to go. So no matter what, I like to always set it up. Vertical, horizontal, V, I, V, F, A, T, D, D, X, V, C, T. Now the soccer ball is gonna go all the way out and back here, and that's the key. It's gonna to return to origin. So our dy is equal to zero. Our a is negative 9.8 meters per second. We don't know vi, we don't know vf, we don't know t, um, we don't know any of these. But we can figure it out. When you do kick something at an angle, it could be broken down into its components. This is your vi and this is your vc. So v theta is the combination of these two vectors together. So we can imagine them, imagine them separately in order to solve this problem. So here's the relationship, sine theta is equal to vi over v theta. So opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to um, vc over v theta. Okay, so those are kind of nice guidelines that you could have when you're doing something like that. So in this case, if I just distribute, this will be V theta sine theta. And since this is also D y equals zero, this is negative V theta sine theta. And this one is V theta cosine theta. Plug everything you know in. These are just um, terms. So uh, V theta is 18 times sine of 30. Sine of 30 is actually half. So half of 18 is nine. And then negative will be negative nine meters per second. So from this, we could figure out time and then we could plug it into here. So let's do that. So VF equals VI plus AT is the easiest one. Um, VF is negative nine, nine plus 9.8 negative T squared move it over so it's negative 18 divided by negative 9.8 t squared. Oh, it's just at, I don't know what I'm doing, just at. Um, I apologize, almost caught that. So 18 divided by 9.8, 1.5 1 ish. Cosine of that times 18 cosine of 30. And I get 28.63. Okay, so that's how far it goes. Now, if dy is equal to zero, we could just use the range equation. So you didn't have to do any of this. You could have just done this, um, which I'm totally fine with. So remember, um, dx is equal to v theta squared sine of two theta over g. So you just plug everything in. v theta is 18 squared sine of two times 30 divided by 9.8. And you should get the same answer if you plug everything in. So 18 squared times sine of 60 
divided by 9.8 and I get 28.63 so I get the same answer so both ways work whichever way you choose to do is totally fine with me on the bottom one it's the same thing but what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for um, and the angle and I gave you DX and B theta so DX is equal to V theta squared sine of 2 theta and you just plug everything in that you know DX is 50 V theta is 25 um, sine of 2 theta divided by 9.8 <clears throat> so multiply both sides by 9.8. So I get that divided by 25 squared. <coughs> Excuse me. And I get 0 0.784 equals sine 2 theta. So do the inverse sine. And I get 51.6 degrees equals 2 theta. So theta is equal to half of that, and I get 25.8. Okay, so that's kind of the answer there. So they're both taking advantage of dy equals zero. Um, you could do it the long way or you could do the short way. Both are fine with me. All right, next one. Okay, shot at an angle. A frog jumps at an angle from one lily pad to another. The frog is in the air for 0.8 seconds. The second lily pad is 2.4 meters away from the first one. So I like to set it up always with this vertical. Horizontal. DX, VC, T. V I V F A T D. We know, and we know this V theta sine theta. This one is V theta cosine theta. We don't know what V F is because I don't know what D Y is until I kind of look at it more. So let's draw it. So here's my froggy. Ribbit, ribbit. Jumps from one lily pad to another. So he, he's on one lily pad or she's on one lily pad. The time in the air is 0.8. So that's nice. 0 0.8 seconds. 0 0.8 seconds. So that gives us a nice start. The second lily pad is 2.4 meters away. So that's dx. 2.4 meters from the first lily pad. What's the velocity of the frog at the angle? So that means how fast did it drop out of here and what angle did it jump from? So it was pretty much trying to find V theta and the angle that the frog jumped. Now, the hard part is we don't know much, but we kind of know we have one, two, so we can solve for VC, even though we have V theta cosine theta. Okay, so DX equals VCT. So DX is 2.4 meters. VC time is 0 0.8 seconds. So what is VC? Well, divide 2.4 by 0 0.8. And you get 3 meters per second equals velocity constant. So now we have that. We have this. We have 1, 2, 3. That doesn't really help us, but I'm assuming this is 0 because the lily pads. So we could solve for our VI as well here. So we could do that. We have, um, let's see, we want VI. So we have everything but VF. So that's probably, let's see, I think it's this one. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. My least favorite equation. This hopefully works out. Zero equals VIT, 0 0.8 plus one half negative 9.8 times 0 0.8 squared. So 0 0.8 squared, oops, 
9.8 squared times 9.8 divided by 2 gives me negative 3.136. Then we have vi times 0 0.8 seconds. We're going to move this to the other side. So we have 3.136 meters divided by 0 0.8 seconds will equal vi. And vi is 3.92. So we're working backwards here. We have VC and VI. Now I can find out the V theta and also the angle. So V theta is VC squared plus VI squared. So we have that. Um, VC squared is 3 squared. 3.92 squared. And you want to take the square root of that. So 3 squared plus 3.92 squared oops I get 4.94 meters per second at and we want to know the degrees so we have VI and VC so we can find out by tangent so VI is 3.92 divided by 3, then second tan, and I get 52.6 degrees. So for this one, we are working backwards. Normally, I'll give you this and then you try to figure out everything else but this time I gave you the final stuff and you kind of have to work your way backwards it could happen either way um, but just know the relationships are the same and this time it worked the way that it was all right last one which is I believe the challenge now this one's hard because we're not ending the problem at when it lands back on the thing so we have an athlete running This way, we have a high bar, which this person needs to jump over. So normally the problem ends over here. But for us, we actually want to know at this distance, which is, let me see, one meter, we want to know the height of his jump or her jump. Um, so what do we do? So let's set it up. VI, VF. A, T, D, and then we have D, V, C, T. Okay, let's read everything. An athlete is attempting a high jump, um, takes off at an angle of 75 degrees. So we know that, 75 degrees, with a velocity of 7. So we actually know V theta and the angle. They were 1 meter from the bar, horizontally, when they jumped, and the bar was 2 meters high. We want to know if they make the jump. So even though you're tempted to put two meters in, you don't want to because that's just how high the bar is, not how high this person jumped. So we're going to start filling in as much as we know. So we know this is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a must. We know that this is V theta sine theta, and this one is V theta cosine theta. In this case, we actually can plug it in because I give you both um, v theta and the angle. So v theta in this case is 7 sine of 75. And this will be 7 cosine of 75. Plug it into your calculator. I'll get some number. I'm going to leave it like that for now and just try to figure out what we need to do. So we want to find, our goal is to find this number. We want to know how high the person is right here. We want to know right here how high the person is. If it's above 2, then they made the jump. If it's below 2, then they hit the bar and didn't make the jump. So we want to find out. Now, when you're looking at this, normally what we have is over here. But like I said, we're going to end the problem right here. If we end the problem right here, the person goes up to here. So we actually know this value right here, 
d in the x direction until the end of our problem, which was 1. So dx is 1 meter. We have this. What we could do is solve for time. So that's the time that's going to reach this area. And then solve for dy. And if dy is bigger than 2, then we're good. If it's smaller, that means we're bad. So let's plug everything in and find out. So we have dx equals vct. We have um, vc, which is 7 cosine of 75. And I get 1.8 something. On the board, I'm just going to write this. But I'm going to keep it in my calculator. Time is what we're looking for. We know displacement is 1. So 1 divided by 1.8 equals t. So 1 divided by gives me 0.552. Now I'm going to plug that back in over here. 0.552 seconds. And then we're going to solve for dy. Let's see, we don't have vf, so d equals vit plus 1 half at squared. v, I don't know what it is. So 7 sine of 75 gives me 6 point, oops, 6.76 times the time, which is 0.552 plus 1 half negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time squared 0.552. I hate this equation. And we need to solve for d. All right, the left side. So I get positive 373 minus whatever this is, 0.552 squared times 9.8 divided by 2. 1.49 so we get a dy of 2.23 meters. So 2.23 is bigger than 2 so this jumper makes it over. So hopefully that made sense. Um, let me know if you need any help with anything else.